Hi, this is Eric Vega with GoEngineer. In this video, I want to go over how to set up a drop test with the Abacus Explicit Solver with the Simulia tools in the 3D Experience platform. Before we begin, there is some information I want to go over in how FEMs are created in the Simulation Scenario apps. Unlike SOLIDWORKS, the Simulia environment does not utilize the direct geometry from your model to run a simulation study. Instead, when you import a file into the 3D Experience platform, there will be an object called a physical product created for the assembly. The assembly itself does not contain the geometry you will utilize for the study. In fact, it contains other PLM placeholders for your parts as physical products. Within those physical products, you will have the 3D shapes. These are the actual 3D geometry that is being brought in from SOLIDWORKS. It is these shapes that are utilized to create the FEM. In cases where you want to simplify geometry or use part of your model, you'll want to create what are called abstraction shapes. These are going to be simplifications separate from the actual production geometry and utilize these to create the FEM. In this case, we're going to run a drop test on a camera that you may be familiar with if you've gone to any SOLIDWORKS simulation professional trainings. The model does not have a floor to impact. So instead, we're going to create an abstraction shape in the assembly level with the model prep app and utilize that for the camera to crash onto. Now let's begin. I'll start by clicking the plus sign in the upper right and selecting import. Here I can choose the file type and then browse into my computer. I've already added this file into the cloud, so I'm going to search for it to open it. I'm going to choose the camera assembly physical product, click the drop down and choose open. This will open up the file in the Model Assembly Design app. Notice how here it shows the physical product for the top level camera, physical products for each one of the components, and 3D shapes held within each one. To start the study, I'll click on a compass and choose Mechanical Scenario. Then the analysis type for structural. And you'll see we now have an analysis case on our tree. If we go to procedures or other tabs, you'll find that most everything is grayed out. This is because we need to link this study to an FEM. To do that, we'll click the FEM button and choose create and automatic for this scenario. If we had other FEMs, we could select them here. Notice that a new FEM has been added to the tree. And if we look at the procedures tab, we now have more options available. Let's go into the Model Prep app to create the floor we'll use for the crash. If I wanted to simplify geometry for my existing model, I could select a shape, but in this case, I'm going to create a new abstraction shape. And the container will be my top level physical product. Once in the Model Prep app, to start a sketch, I'll select a face and then position sketch. I'll create a line to represent the floor and add some dimensions to it. When I click Exit app, we'll leave the sketcher and I now have the option to extrude that sketch. Just like in SOLIDWORKS, I'll have the option to expand these surfaces in two directions and exit the app to finish my changes. Now we need to set a shell section for this body. For that, we'll go into the model app. But notice how now the feature tree shows the abstraction shape as hidden. Since that surface was created after the study was initialized, we need to tell it that we want to include it. For that, we'll go to the Setup tab and go into the Contributing Shapes Manager. Here, we'll include the abstraction shape. Now, if I go into the Visualization Management option and choose to show contributing bodies, it'll show the floor we recently created. Let's go into Properties to create a shell section. I'll select my surface, give it a thickness, and assign a material. Since we are going to make this a rigid body, the material isn't really that important, but we need it to be able to run the study. Next, we want to set all the bonded faces in this assembly. For that, we're going to go into the Connections tab and use the Tie Detection option. When I open this tool, I'll just leave the whole model selected, give it a tolerance, and then select Find Ties. 
This will create ties between any of the faces it finds making contact in the model. I actually want to remove this one, since this is going to glue both the front and back cover. So I'll right click and get rid of it. Next, let's create the rigid body. I'll go to abstractions, click rigid body and select the surface that I utilized to create that section. And I'll set its reference point to the center of mass. Now let's go into the mesh app so that we can create the mesh for each one of these bodies. Since I already have definitions for each one of these, I'm going to shift select and update the mesh. This gives me a warning about mesh that does not fit the existing geometry. We could ignore this and run the study, but I'm choosing to take care of it by adding a local mesh control. I'll open the main mesh and then choose the option local mesh size. I'll use a size of one millimeter and then a small sag, then choose the corresponding faces. I'll click mesh to see if that takes care of the problem, which it does. I want to add mesh controls on the faces that are going to be doing the impact. So I'll go back into the main mesh and add another. I'll select the faces that will be making impact. And I'll also select the faces with the bonded contact. It's common to add a mesh refinement on the secondary face of a contact to help with solver performance. Next, I'll create a quad mesh for the surface on the floor. And I'm not too worried about the quality since it's going to be a rigid body. Next, I'm going to go into the properties option and assign a material for each one of these sections. With stainless steel in all the bodies and glass on the lens, we just have to go into the Scenario app to set up our study. To use the Abacus Explicit Solver, I'll want to choose the Explicit Dynamic step. Next, I'll go to the Restraints tab and clamp the rigid body for the floor. Instead of using the display, I'm going to click this drop-down for selections and choose FEM feature. This will clamp the entire rigid body, not just particular nodes or elements of it. Next, I'll add gravity. To align the gravity to the direction of the floor, I'll use the option to align the triad handle to a plane. I'll add an initial condition of initial velocity and use the filter to select the solid bodies of my assembly. I'm going to set this to two meters per second. To change the direction, I'm gonna use the robot that I see here to manually point downwards against the ground and add a little forward motion just to add more complexity to the draw. Last, I need to set the interactions between all of these bodies. The Abacus solver has really powerful contact solvers. All we need to do is create a general contact and then leave it as a default option to recognize all surfaces for contact and click OK. Here we're essentially done. If we want more granular control, we can create a contact property where we're able to add particular parameters like the friction on all faces and then reassign this to the global contact. If I open up the general contact, I could choose that new contact property that I created. We are now ready to run the study and we'll fast forward to when the study is finished. With the study finished, we can now view the results and see how the impact affects the camera. In this case, the material property I created for glass allows for element deletion, which is why we can see the glass lens breaking off after the impact. This is just one of the great advantages of the Abaco Solver in the Simulia tools in the 3D Experience platform. In this video, we've gone over how to create a mechanical scenario for a drop test using the Abacus Explicit Solver, creating abstractions in our physical products, and setting rigid bodies. This has been Eric Vega with GoEngineer. Stay tuned for more tips and tricks on how to use the Simulia tools in the 3D Experience platform.